In this video, we will learn how to design a RAM control tuning circuit and the outcomes of this experiment are described here. After doing this experiment, we should be able to design and test a voltage control to the circuit. This is a voltage control to the circuit for a half wave control rectifier and we should be able to identify the major features, issues and suggest modifications for different situations like what if we make it a full wave control rectifier and so on so this triggering circuit is used for obtaining a triggering pulse at a desired phase shift angle or time proportional to a control voltage v control so that means there is a weak control and this weak control is going to control the alpha so here is your triggering circuit so you can describe this as a black box concept for this circuit so when i change the control voltage this alpha the position of the triggering pulse is also changed so the power circuit that we intend to apply triggering circuit is a half a control rectifier with an ac source and a CR and a simple R or RL load. We are going to apply this pulse to the gate with respect to the cathode. In this experiment, we are not worried about the isolation requirements here because we will be focusing on generating the pulse alone. We will concentrate our attention on the circuit here. This is a complete circuit. We partition the circuit into the major stages you can see that you have a current source here made up of a transistor a pnp transistor being bc 177 this is the current source okay so this current source is uh, basically charging this capacitor here capacitor is being charged so that is where you get the ram voltage then we have another section which is a synchronizing circuit which is used to reset the ramp which comprises of this sub circuit here okay so this is the synchronizing circuit okay which is used to reset the ramp uh, why we need a synchronizing circuit because at the, if this is the input AC voltage, our gating pulse at every cycle should be exactly at the same position with respect to the previous zero crossing. So, synchronizing our gate pulse to the zero crossings of the input power supply is very essential. Okay, and the final and third portion here is the comparator circuit. Here, this is the comparator circuit which produces the gating pulse okay so these are the three important stages in this circuit a current source a synchronizing circuit and a comparator so let us understand how this works so the basic concept is to have a ramp like this okay this is synchronized to the zero crossings are synchronized to the zero crossings of the input Time wave. The ramp is having a height V ramp. It is to be compared with a control voltage, V control, and at the comparison point, we get a pulse. So the position of the pulse is from this zero, which is synchronized to the zero crossing of the sine wave so if you superimpose the sine wave here you can see that with respect to the zero so since this is a halfway control rectifier we don't want pulse in the negative half cycle so during this entire period the ramp will be reset and again at this zero crossing the ramp will start so the start of the ramp is always synchronized to the zero crossing of the input sine wave and when I change the control voltage up, 
can see that the crossing point in the comparison operation is moving up so that the edge of the pulse is also moving right so you increase the alpha when you increase the control voltage you increase the alpha if i decrease the control voltage i will decrease the alpha okay so this is a basic principle this concept is used in most of the pwm uh, ic's used in power electronics okay so first uh, we need a ram generator ram generator which is nothing but a constant current source charging a capacitor okay when the capacitor voltage reaches the required ram voltage we ramp what we'll do is we'll simply reset this capacitor voltage this is how you produce a ramp perfect ramp so for that we need a constant current source and a constant current source can be made using a transistor because you know that when you bias the transistor in its constant current region uh, it, you can make it work as a constant current source so r1 r2 re are chosen such a way that we the, the transistor bc177 produce a required current but how do we fix that current so for that we need to look at the ramp required ramp we know that the ac waveform is having a half cycle of t by 2 and we want our ramp to start at the beginning of this zero crossing at this zero crossing and then end exactly at t by 2 okay so the ramp time time period is t by 2 and the ramp required height is say v ramp okay so let us say v ramp is equal to 5 volts we know that when you char charge a capacitor a c with ic as the charging current the voltage across the capacitor is equal to 1 by c integral ic dt and if i keep ic as a constant then ec of t is equal to i by c into t plus the integration constant so this represents the uh, ramp so at the end of time t by 2 the ramp voltage is t ramp so at the end of uh, at t is equal to t by 2 we have vc of t reaching v ramp which is equal to our 5 volt this is equal to i by c into t by 2 okay so uh, from this if you assume c you can get current or if you assume i you can get capacitance usually uh, we will assume a capacitor because that is available in only certain standard values let us take one microfarad here so the current required for this is uh, c i is equal to uh, that 5 volt into c divided by t by 2 so this is 5 into 1 microfarad divided by t by 2 is 10 millisecond so this will give us 0.5 milliampere this is the current required so later if you observe in your ramp if you are not getting exact uh, 5 volt in exact t by 2 you may have situation like this or situation like this so you can adjust the biasing of the transistor to adjust the current so that it reaches exact vol voltage required in the exact time so now our idea is to uh, bias the transistor in such a way that it operates with a constant current i t is equal to 0.5 milliampere so if you look back the circuit here this ic is going to charge the capacitor the emitter current is approximately equal to the collector current that is equal to 0.5 ampere you see here the emitter current flows through the resistance re here current re that is a voltage drop re we need to assume that voltage so let us uh, assume that the voltage across vre to be around uh, one fourth of the VCC, which is equal to 
approximately 3 volt so because VCC we have chosen as 12 volt so if VRE is 3 volt VRE is equal to IE into RE so that is equal to 3 volt so this means RE can be calculated it is 3 volt divided by 0.5 milliampere which is 6 kilo ohms you know that there is no 6 kilo ohm standard value so we will assume a uh, 5 that 0.6k ohms here we can calculate back back what will be the uh, voltage across the emitter resistance which is equal to uh, 5.6k into 0.5 milliampere which will be around 2.8 volt so re is fixed as re is now designed to be 5.6k okay now we need to design r1 and r2 for that we assume a current i2 which is approximately some point on milliampere this is much larger than the base current so with respect to the base current with respect to this i2 base current is negligible so we may approximate this current i2 as the supply voltage divided by the sum of resistance actually there is a current uh, branching out from this junction but for the design approximation we will neglect that base current and I, r1 plus r2 is the total resistance across vcc so i2 we will assume as 0.1 milliampere and with, that means i2 is equal to vcc divided by total resistance of the path so which means r1 plus r2 is equal to vcc divided by 0 0.1 milliampere which is equal to 12 divided by 0 0.1 milliampere which is 120k we need to look at the base voltage here vb so from in this loop if you write the equation vcc minus uh, vre minus uh, the b drop 0.7 vb is equal to vb so vb can be written as so here vb can be written as vcc minus vre minus vb so which is equal to 12 minus or 2.8 volt vre minus vbe which is 0.7 volt which is equal to uh, 8.5 volt now because we have the potential divider here r1 r2 you see see here and this point is connected to the base we have a potential divider principle applying here so vb from that principle vb is equal to vcc into r2 divided by total rest r1 plus r2 uh, which means that which means that uh, r2 can be calculated as vb into r1 plus r2 divided by vcc which is equal to vb is 8.5 volt into r1 plus r2 is 120k divided by 12 so this is uh, 85 kilo ohms so R2 can be chosen as uh, the standard value nearest to 82 is 85 is 82k so R2 is chosen as 82k so then R1 is equal to 120k minus 82k which is uh, 38k so the nearest standard value is R1 is equal to 39k or the lower value 33k can also be used only thing is that both these values you should make sure that the base emitter junction is forward bias and the collector base junction is reverse bias as in proper transistor biasing from here so this r2 is uh, 82k and this is uh, 33k or 39k should also work now we have to come to the resetting circuit okay so here R5 uh, and R6 can be used uh, designed for making PC107 act as a switch 
you can assume some current here IC is equal to say 1 or 2 milliampere and IB is uh, 1 tenth of that for hard saturation you can design we can choose uh, R6 as uh, if R6 is 10k then this can be 1 tenth of that that is 1k should be enough or you can also choose double this 2.2k okay and this diode is uh, 1 and 4001 or 4007 that series again R4 is uh, because we have a pulse coming here this should drive this transistor into saturation so you can put 1 kilo ohm should be enough to drive enough base current here and this resistance is to limit the discharge current of the R3 is used to limit the discharge current of the capacitor and uh, if R3 is large then it will cause the RAM to look like this okay if r2 is uh, r3 is small then it will quickly discharge so this has to be a very small resistance you can put 10 ohm here coming to the comparator section we need to change the control voltage vcc in the range of the ramp height if the ramp height is 5 volt then the control voltage should go up to 5 volt because above 5 volt you won't get any uh, comparison operations you need to limit the control voltage to 5 volt so or if you want to limit the voltage to a lower voltage that also can be done so for that we need to put a divider arrangement here one potentiometer at the bottom side and a fixed resistance on the top side so let us take that situation here this is r8 and this is v1 this is vcc which is 12 volt so this voltage has to be a maximum so this is the control voltage okay control voltage maximum should be equal to V ramp for full 180 degree this uh, means V control maximum is equal to VCC into V1 at its maximum point divided by R8 plus V1 max. So from this we can get R8 uh, to be approximately 7.3k. If I choose V1 max, V1 as a 4.7k port, I'll get R8 to be 7.3k. So you can choose 6.8k standard value. This can be 6.8k. And finally, the pull up resistance here, which is a must for LM311, this can be 1k or any value up to 10k. Between 1k to 10k, you can choose. Okay. <coughs> so, this is this completes the design. Uh, don't forget to give the minus supply voltage here. So suppose you want to uh, limit the maximum firing angle to some point then uh, let us say maximum firing angle to this point then you can come uh, calculate the corresponding voltage control voltage maximum here and then you can redesign R8 in such a way that even if you uh, vary the control voltage here to the maximum it will not uh, exceed the maximum specified here so that your maximum firing angle can be controlled.